Today we're talking about why the submembrane is such a big deal and what it does for the cell. Again, we're doing this so we can understand how the cell survives, and our success criteria is being able to describe membrane semi-permeability. So what's the point of the cell membrane? What function does it serve within the cell? Basically, its function is to determine what things get into the cell and what things stay out of the cell. <laughs> <clears throat> the fluid around cells, we call it extracellular fluid, very point-and-click name. The extracellular fluid contains salts, it contains ions, it can have viruses, bacteria, it can have other cells, it can have proteins. What the cell membrane does is it uses the proteins on its surface to allow some things in and to keep everything else out. This is... Um, what we call semi-permeability. If something is permeable, it means that you can pass through it. But semi-permeable means that some things can and some things can't. It's kind of permeable. It's permeable to some materials, but not to others. This can happen for a lot of different reasons. One of them is particle size. Things like oxygen and water are small enough that they can actually slip between the phospholipids. Phospholipids are gigantic molecules, if we go back a couple of lectures. One water molecule would only be about the size of this carbon and hydrogen together. So water, even though you have a hydrophobic area in the middle, it can actually slip through and pass through the cell membrane, although it does do that a bit slowly. Oxygen is another molecule that's small enough it can slip through, so is carbon dioxide. Other times, though, large molecules are too big to pass through. Like, sugar is a very large molecule, C6H12O6, that's glucose, and that is the simplest sugar we can have. Bigger sugars have even more atoms in them. Those molecules can't slip between the phospholipids. So we have proteins in the surface that allow them to bind and move them across the membrane. Sometimes these are actively pulling them across. Sometimes they're just making a space through which they can pass through. Same thing can happen with other properties of a chemical. Ions, for instance, have a hard time passing through the cell membrane because of their charges. So you need dedicated protein channels to allow them to pass through. So the cell membrane is basically acting as a bouncer. Anything that has a protein that matches with it, the cell will let in, or the cell membrane will let into the cell. But if it's a large molecule that doesn't have a uh, gate through which it can travel, the cell membrane should keep it out. Now, obviously, there are times that this goes wrong. What bacteria and viruses often do is they hijack proteins to trick the cell membrane into letting them in. But that is a different story for a different time. <laughs>